Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to HemingwayLand.com, your source for quality, affordable land in the state of New Mexico. New property going live on the website today, guys. This one in the southeastern portion of the state. Yes, we're back in Chavez County. And this one is another spacious, ideally located lot. And I say ideally located because it is within Roswell city limits, or let's say right on the southern outskirts. Point being, you're right there in a major New Mexico town, number one. Number two, as you can see from the headline, it's a partially fenced lot. Number three, it's got power at the property boundary. More importantly, however, this is in one of these regions where there is no pre-platted subdivision. Ergo, ergo people, I'm speaking Latin, ergo, uh, no covenants, no restrictions, no HOA, no annual dues, etc. So not a lot of uh not a lot of uh, interference anybody telling you how you can and cannot develop your property outside of county zoning which we will discuss later in the video until such time let's get to introing the property this is reference number cvnm-3947 located as noted in chavez county this is a scooch a very scooch over five acres 5.01 to be exact uh, and as you saw up top, this is priced at $30,000. For the record, guys, $30,000, of course, is a not insignificant sum of money. That being said, when you get to land in the southeastern portion of the state, it does generally tend to go up on a price per acre basis. And that 30 for five acres is, believe it or not, uh, pretty affordable for this region. Anyway, with that said, guys, let's bring it up on a map, show you exactly where it is. We've got GPS coordinates down here, as we do with all of our listing pages. Click any one of them, and voila, Google Maps. Anyway, uh, so this is the state of New Mexico right here. For those of you not intimately familiar with the geography, most people tend to start out by asking about Albuquerque. How close, how far is the property from Albuquerque? The property, of course, is down here in the southeastern portion of the state, so not terribly close. Three and a half, four hour drive time, something like that. That being said, as noted, the property does sit within the city limits of Roswell or right on the outskirts, the dividing line. I'm not entirely certain where it is, but it's very close. It's right here by Roswell. For the record, guys, in the gallery at the bottom of this listing page, we have, yes, photos of Roswell demonstrating local color. Roswell, of course, is a town of about 47,000 people. When you have that kind of population, of course, you have the presence of Walmart, uh, Sam's Club, a Target, a Lowe's, a Home Depot, grocery stores, movie theaters, parks, recreation, hospitals, medical centers, schools, churches, so on and so forth. The point is that uh, living here at this property, whatever you're going to need is going to be a short drive away. Everything that I just mentioned is roughly within at least five to 10 minutes of the property. So obviously you're not going to have to go too far for anything that you need. Uh, additionally, of course, there is a lot of uh, sort of things to do out here. This is not uh, this is not an undeveloped small town. This is not like some hick cowboy country town. There is some stuff going on, bars, nightlife, and of course, the uh, storied alien history is exploited on seemingly every street corner out here. Uh, so you can learn a lot about that. The UFO uh, Museum is in this region as well. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, additionally, within very close proximity to the subject property, not a lot of people realize how what kind of a happening corner of the state this is down here. But I just want to show you in this region down here within really 10 to 10 minutes to 60 minutes from the property, you've got things like the Bitter Lake National Wildlife Refuge. By the way, guys, we also have photos of that here in the photo gallery. So these are photos taken from the wildlife refuge out there. Uh, you get a sense of what that's like. That, of course, is about five minutes north, northeast of the subject property. Uh, in addition, hang on guys. So this is up here, Bottomless Lake State Park down here. Uh, we've got these linked on the listing page if you'd like to learn more about these places. This is Bottomless Lakes. This is Bitter Lake. Uh, Carlsbad Caverns, roughly about an hour south of the subject property in Carlsbad. And then just to the west of the subject property, uh, Ruidoso Downs Racetrack and Casino. Here we go. And, of course, Ski Apache, Ski Apache, where you can go skiing and bike riding or zip lining. I'm sure many other things as well. That, too, is about an hour west of the property. So a lot going on down there, a lot to do, uh, both in the immediate vicinity of the property as well as sort of within an hour drive time. Anyway, with all that said, guys, back to the map. All right. So the subject property sits down here right off of Concord Road, uh, just south of Roswell itself, from the southern portion of Roswell, and just very close, roughly about a mile and a half West of the 285, Highway 285 is going to take you into some of those aforementioned towns, Roswell, Carlsbad, Artesia, etc. Anyway, property sits right here off of Concord Road. I'm staying on this version of the map because, as you can see, there is no plat overlay out here demonstrating uh, what the property looks like. Additionally, 
Additionally, guys, if you call Chavez County Planning and Zone and you try to get a plat map for this, you're not gonna. At least we couldn't. So I just want to show you right here, number one, this is the northern boundary of the property. And this right here is the eastern boundary of the property. Not entirely certain where the southern boundary is, but basically right here. And, of course, the western boundary is this road frontage here along Concord Road. As always, guys, here in the photo gallery, we've got the Google Earth overlay to give you a, a sense of the size, shape, general location, footprint of this land. It's a five-acre rectangle off of Concord Road. There you go. Anyway, uh, that was the best we could do as far as plat maps go. All right, so uh, in regards to subject property, a couple things I want to point out to you. Number one, as I said, mile and a half from the 285 over here in this region, you will see there are some developed uh, agricultural businesses out here, some family farms, some ranches, uh, things like that. A lot of these properties are five acres, 10 acres, and uh, you'll find some homes, some single family residences. You'll find some mobile homes, some modular homes. You'll find some uh, kind of semi-industrial businesses. The neighbor to the north right here looks like it might be one of those. The neighbor over here looks like it might be one of those. So that is the immediate vicinity. Let's go to the photo gallery, guys, and I'll give you an even better sense of the property. So first off, we've got some of the neighbors. These are some of the developed home sites out here in close proximity to the land. Not bad. This is the road, the road to the subject property. Not exactly paved, not exactly dirt. It's one of those half and half kind of well-maintained dirt gravel type things. Whatever the case, as you can tell, any vehicle is going to be able to get up and down on this thing. So whether you drive a large, giant truck or a tiny, tiny Prius, either way, you will be able to approach the land without completely damaging your car. And then, of course, we've got photos of the subject property. Uh, as noted, as you can see, power at the lot line. Um, so should be easy, should be affordable to get power connected to whatever you desire to build on the land. Also, of course, this is a nice flat buildable piece of land, easy to build on, easy to park on, not the kind of thing that's going to require a lot of landscaping or excavation to even get started. Um, anyway, furthermore, as we go through this, you're going to see the fencing that exists along the northern and eastern boundaries of the property. Oh, hey, there it is. Of course, this is New Mexico where moo cows and horses have the right of way. So if you do have livestock on your property and you want to keep them off the neighbor's yard, you're going to have to put up a fence along that southern portion of the property. But fencing along the northern and eastern is already there. So additionally, it will keep the moo cows and horses off of your land if the neighbors do actually have those. Anyway, this is the eastern boundary fencing and this is the northern boundary fencing. So you can get a sense of the difference between those two. Anyway, as I go through the photos here, a couple things I want to talk about. I mentioned zoning earlier. So this area is zoned rural, hang on a second, rural suburban district. And I will come back to this PDF in just a bit. What I want to communicate to you guys is this is not one of these areas where it's a pre-platted subdivision. As I mentioned earlier, those are usually the product of a developer who comes in, buys up a whole bunch of land, chops them all up into one acre lots, so on and so forth. But when they do that chopping, when they do that subdividing, they usually come up with some basic covenants or restrictions. How big a structure can be, how many stories, minimum square footage, uh, things like that uh, to create, let's say, some sort of aesthetic uniformity within the community that they're creating. That does not exist out here. So one of the benefits of that, of course, is that you're going to have the freedom to do what you want for the most part, freedom to do what you want with the land. Uh, one of the drawbacks, of course, is that some of the neighbors can do what they want, and that may not be the most um, pleasing thing to the eyes, let's say. Uh, whatever the case, those covenants and restrictions do not exist. The zoning is the only thing that really covers this area. And Chavez County has roughly about a 300-page zoning ordinance, something like that. The rural-suburban definitions within that are... They're a little bit spread out throughout the uh, throughout the thing, but um, basically any questions you're going to have about this are going to be answered in this one-page PDF that we have attached on the page here. Uh, as you can see, kind of from the region out here, it's mostly designed as a uh, residential area, uh, single-family residences, mobile, modular homes, so on and so forth, but there are uh, exceptions to that, conditional permitted uses that you can get for uh, agricultural businesses or sort of industrial businesses that you might want to have in this region. So there's always that possibility. I'll return to that in just a bit, guys. The, uh, the photos are a little uh, visually redundant, so I just want to kind of fast forward down here and show you guys the drone overlays that'll give you a sense of, again, the footprint of the land. As noted, guys, you can see here in the photo the, the uh, northern boundary fencing here, the eastern boundary fencing. No fencing here, so you know, if that is the kind of thing that you're going to want to put up, either to keep the neighbors out or to keep 
you know, your whatever livestock in, uh, that'll be something you'll probably need to hire a surveyor for to figure out exactly where the southern boundary starts and ends at. But, uh, of course, your east, uh, west, and northern boundaries are pretty well dictated here. Uh, additionally, one thing I want to point out, guys, is that you can see off here in the distance there are some plains in this region. If we pull back on the map here, you'll see that the subject property sits about a mile, something like that. Right click, measure distance, roughly, let's say, a mile east of the Roswell International Air Center. What does international mean, by the way? Does that mean they have one flight to Mexico, or does that mean they have 42 flights to Southeast Asia? I don't know, guys. But you would expect some noise. You would expect some noise from the International Airport. A photographer went out to this property about three times, and he reported, no noise. No noise. Now, if you're saying, hey, Hemingway, there's no way I believe that, I agree with you. It seems like, I'm not saying he's lying, I'm saying it had to be an anomaly, right? You would think. Anyway, guys, if you're going to drop $30,000 on a piece of property, and you are worried about noise pollution, or the deafening sound of airplanes flying overhead, uh, you should go out and scout this one in advance. This is something we're going to encourage you to do. Uh, we don't have any first-hand knowledge of the air traffic in the region other than what our photographer reported from his three visits. By the way, guys, while I'm on this photo, I just want to point out this uh, this lot over here to the north looks like it's semi-residential. It looks like they're running some kind of business out of here. That, again, is part of that whole conditional use permit. And that, of course, you know, some people like being able to do what they can, whatever they want on their property, but sometimes the neighbors do things like this. Maybe it looks like a bit of a mess. That's just, that's one of the trade-offs here. But nonetheless, one of the things that we wanted to point out here in the video. Anyway, guys, I will let you explore the photo gallery a little bit more on your own time. Down here at the bottom of the page, we're going to have a drone from the property itself to give you a sense of the surroundings, the terrain, etc. Uh, please take a look at that if you are serious about buying this property. Even if you're not, it'll be a fun three minutes. You'll get to see the drone flying all over the land. Anyway, in regards to zoning, guys, just want to let you know that RS Rural Suburban PDF that I showed you is linked here. It is also linked up here in the table. Uh, the RS zoning designation. By the way, if we go through this, a couple things I want to talk about. Number one, as mentioned, it's, it's zoned, uh, you know, as a residential area. Um, livestock is acceptable, horses and cows, no pigs. That's one of the things the zoning ordinance makes clear on one of the other 300 pages. Uh, additionally, RV living, RVs cannot be a permanent dwelling in this area. You can RV on the property for up to two weeks or with a building permit, of course, if you're building the uh, the, the Permanent dwelling on the property, obviously they anticipate you have to live out of something else during that time. So with a building permit, you can live out of the RV. I don't anticipate most people are buying a $30,000 property specifically to RV and camp on. But if you are one of those people, it's not really all that allowed. Anyway, with the conditional uses down here, you can see agribusinesses and plant nurseries are acceptable. Uh, what, <laughs> what are the, let me find the other important things on here. I don't expect most of you guys are building a cemetery, uh, renewable energy facilities, animal control shelters, things like that. If you want to run a veterinary hospital, something like that, you could probably do it out here on this land for more specific questions, guys, about what can I do? What can I not do with this property? Is this acceptable? What's the minimum square footage? I want to build a tiny home. Uh, it is best to call the Chavez County Planning Zoning Office. We have their number down here. They can answer the really hyper-specific questions. Again, we have the comprehensive zoning ordinance down here. Uh, you can read through that. You can try to get a sense of that. Or you can just call their office and ask them the questions. The point is they're going to have a far better sense of it than we do. Anyway, that's number one. Number two, let's talk about this. Utilities, as noted, power at the lot line. Um, the... Central Valley Electric Co-op is the uh, utility company that services this region. So if you do have questions, we have a link right there to their website. Hang on. It's this one. There we go. A link to their website where, of course, you can call. You can talk to them, try to figure out, uh, you know, costs, uh, practically speaking, how, how hard, how expensive, how inexpensive is it going to be for me to get uh, power connected on the property. Uh, as noted, it's right there on the lot line, so probably not all that difficult, not all that expensive. Whatever the case, this is the entity that services this region. Additionally, guys, let's talk about water for a second. So going back here to the map, you know, I'm talking about this pre-platted subdivision. See that a lot up in like Cibola County, Valencia County, Taos County, Socorro County. There are other parts of the state where developers came in and they said, let's take 10 acres and let's put 82 home sites on it because they want to make as much money as possible. Down here in this region of the state, uh, they understood that they're in a desert state and that water may eventually run out. So a lot of the zoning down here has to do with five and 10 acre minimum size properties. Can't do X unless it's, 
you know, over five acres, this is over 10 acres, that sort of thing. So if you look at this region, you kind of analyze some of the plots of land that people have. They're a lot bigger than what you would find uh, up north, up in the northern part of the state, some of those communities I was mentioning. Point being, down here, uh, because they were trying to conserve on water, you will find a lot of water utilities that actually service this region. When you see something like this, I can't believe that one, two, three, four, guy in a trailer, five, six, seven, I can't believe that there's eight wells all on this block. There's probably not, uh, there's not city utilities out here. You're not going to find, you know, Roswell City and Water out here. But the point is that there are water companies that service this region. On the listing page, we talk about this up top or we address it up top, I should say. The Barendo Water Co-op is one of the uh, entities out here that helps bring water and sewer services to individual lots. If you click on that link or the link we have under the county contact information, you will find uh, this organization. They actually have a website. They do occasionally answer the phone. So if you have questions, you can address them to them. Hey, I'm looking to buy some land uh, out here in Chavez County. It's just south of Roswell. It's, it's kind of uh, east of the airport. Do you service that region? What do I need to know? What is it going to take for me to get connected? Uh, so on and so forth. But they could come out there and, uh, and help you out with that. Additionally, there's a couple other entities in this region. I'm not entirely sure what their service areas are. There's are some just for Hagerman, some just for Artesia. Roswell Water and Sewer is one that I'm assuming services this area, along with Berendo. These are links to their respective websites. Cumberland doesn't have a website, so we've included their phone number here. But these are three entities you would want to start with uh, to investigate cost and logistics for something like that. Additionally, guys, as always, we do like to point out that here under county contacts, we also have the New Mexico State Engineer's Office. If you do want to drill a well, if you want to get permitted for that, click that link. It'll take you to their website. Uh, of course, if you want water rights, if you want a permit for drilling a well, this is the state entity, the state organization that you need to speak with. They're responsible for all permitting in, uh, well, New Mexico. So, they are the best source for that. Additionally, guys, we also have some PDFs link here, well drilling permit application, well drilling info uh, that might be of some help to you uh, to learn more about that process. Blah, blah, blah. With all that said, guys, if you are interested in this purchasing this property, the first thing you should know is that we closed on this through landmark title. This is something we got title insurance on. Ergo, we will be providing a warranty deed. If you come up here, click the buy now button, it We'll take you to a secure checkout where we're going to ask for a non-refundable, let me stress this, non-refundable earnest money deposit of $500. The $500 counts toward the purchase price, and uh, there is no financing here. This is a cash sale of $30,000. So the $500 is really how we kick off the transaction. It's how you demonstrate that you're serious. The point is you put down the $500. Uh, give us some information we're going to need for the deed or for the sale purchase agreement. Agree to the terms of service, and on the next page, you can enter credit or debit card information to place that $500 deposit. The way that this works, guys, is enumerated on a page on our website called How It Works Buying From Us. If you go to that page, you're going to see that we have two options here. When we get into this price range, we always encourage our buyers to close through title and escrow. Title and escrow, for those of you who don't know, is... Um, Amongst other things, the service that they provide is that they're a uh, neutral third party that is going to handle both the disbursement of funds as well as the conveyance of the land. Point being, we cannot get your $29,500 until such a time as we have signed a deed and the property has been conveyed to you. Those funds will not be released to us until then. So it's a nice sort of peace of mind for you, the buyer. Additionally, title company, of course, will provide title insurance for the land for you. If you plan on building out here, if you plan on developing this five acres and you anticipate you're going to have to take out a loan at some point, a uh, lender will not lend on property that doesn't have title insurance. So it behooves you to get that at some point. Might as well do it when you purchase the land. Whatever the case, if you'd like to see what one of our contracts looks like, this is the thing you'd be asked to sign. We have a generic version of one of our standard contracts. Very simple, very easy to read. One page, one page for signatures, guys. Point being... We don't draft this till we have money, and the title company doesn't do anything until the document, this contract, has been submitted. So uh, you sign it, we sign it, we submit it to them, and they will do the rest. Full disclosure, title companies generally tend to be pretty hokey poke. I would anticipate 30 days before this would be done. Point being, in about 30 days, they'll contact you for the remainder of the funds. They'll tell you how to wire them, how to get a cashier's check out to them, and they will contact us and have us sign a new deed conveying the property to you. 
With all that said, guys, that is the process. If you have any questions, go over that How It Works page. It'll go into greater detail there, particularly if I went too fast. Uh, anyway, so yeah, another fantastic property out here in the southeastern portion of the state. It's been hard for us for a while to get land in this region, but we finally found a, finally started to find some good properties, uh, particularly big spacious lots like this with the power, with the nice roads, so on and so forth. So hope you guys like this one as much as I do. Uh, if you have any comments, any questions, leave them there on the uh, YouTube uh, video channel. Or, or shoot us an email at support at HemingwayLand.com. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.